Let's bring in former Prime Minister, the Right Honourable Kim Campbell, to join us now. Ms. Campbell, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, very nice to talk to you. A sad day, but an important, an important life to remember and uh, uh, pay tribute to. And you had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with Brian Mulroney when he was PM. You were his justice minister. What was that like? Well, he actually was wonderful because when he, you know, once he figured out that you could do your job, he basically left you alone to do it. And, uh, and so I had three wonderful years in that portfolio. I was able to do a great many things. But, you know, I wanted to just comment about, um, you know, some of his accomplishments and how they reflect qualities of his character. Because, you know, if people are complicated and we have losses and wins and whatever. Mm -hmm. But I think the, the big issues that people are talking about reflect something much deeper about Brian Mulroney. And I think about free trade. That was the issue that actually brought me into federal politics. I was elected in the second Mulroney mandate because I thought it was very important. But like many people, Brian Mulroney had a kind of a knee-jerk reaction that free trade between Canada and the United States was, you know, was a non-starter. You know, Canada was small, America was big, and we'd lose out, even though a lot of... Uh, Academics would say that free trade agreements between countries of different sizes disproportionately benefit the small country. But when the McDonald uh, Royal Commission reported in, in uh, 1985, this was a royal commission which was established by Pierre Trudeau, a liberal government chaired by a former liberal finance minister. But it was the most in-depth and, and profound and extensive review of the Canadian economy and polity probably in the 20th century, century, certainly since World War II. And when they reported, they recommended that we enter into negotiations for a free trade agreement with the United States. And what I really admire about Brian Mulroney is that because of the nature of this advice, the quality of the people who had made up the commission and the seriousness of their recommendations, he didn't just dismiss it and say, oh, no, I know that. He said, oh, maybe I've been wrong. Maybe it would be good for Canada. And he became persuaded that it would be and started the negotiations for the free trade agreement. And I think that ability to rethink something and to, to learn and to be open and to be respectful of well-founded knowledge was a very great strength of his and something very admirable. And when we talk about the Acid Rain Treaty, that's an example of his willingness to listen uh, to his backbenchers because... Um, you know, Pierre Trudeau once said that off the hill backbenchers are nobodies. And actually, when you get off the hill and you see backbenchers, you see they're really somebodies in their mm -hmm. own writings. And that's why they wind up in Ottawa. But we had a wonderful member from Muskoka named Stan Darling. And Stan Darling just got his teeth in Brian Mulroney's ankle and said, you've got to do something about acid rain. Because he could see what acid rain was doing to the forests of Ontario and eastern Canada and the United States. And this was not something that Brian Mulroney knew about or really cared about. And he didn't think of himself as Mr. Tree Hugger environmentalist. But again, he listened. And Stan Darling persuaded him that this was really a problem. And it was a, a, a view that was supported by the other advice Brian when he saw. So again, his willingness to be open to a new argument, something that he hadn't thought about, it wasn't sort of high on his list of political issues that he wanted to deal with. But I thought that was that was very admirable. And, and kind of on a personal sense, you know, Brian Mulroney gave up drinking and gave up smoking. Now, I think... Those are unbelievably admirable things to do, that he thought that, you know, alcohol was beginning to create a problem for him, and he just quit. And he quit smoking. Nicotine is one of the most addictive sub substances there is. And for the rest of his life, he was a non-drinker and a non-smoker. And, and incidentally, he was still the life of the party even mm -hmm. when he wasn't drinking. He didn't require any, any, any booze to get him, you know, telling stories and making everybody laugh. And he loved, he loved to charm people with, with good humor or whatever. But those are just kind of reflections of a character and a strength in a man that when you give him the responsibility and power of being prime minister can lead to some important judgments and some important willing, willingnesses or, or initiatives to solve problems in ways that are require deeper thinking and the, the, the willingness to do things and think in new and different ways. So I admired that very much about him. Is that some of the advice you took with you when you took over from him? He, what else did he? Well, pass I on wish to? I had more time, more, more time to apply that advice. But again, I think it was the idea of trying to, uh, to found things on a solid basis. And uh, but even in you know the work I did as, as a minister, but I mean it, it's not about me. It's really, it's about him. And I think that there's so much about his impact on 
Canadian Society of the Rule. And even, you know, you hear him talking about Nelson Mandela. And it sounds like kind of a throwaway humorous remark. But he didn't let people get away with calling Mandela a communist. He says, well, how the hell do you know he's a communist? You know, that's an easy knee-jerk reaction because in the Cold War, we didn't like communists. Uh, and I have to tell you that I was in Parliament when Nelson Mandela came to speak to the House of Commons, and it was a pretty moving moment. And somebody asked me recently, when was the last time I saw Brian? And actually, last time I saw Brian in person was when we were both on the Canadian delegation to Nelson Mandela's funeral. And, uh, you know, nobody had a, you know, a, a better reason to be there uh, and to honor his old friend than Brian Mulroney, because, uh, you know, I remember that there were a lot of people who, you know, poo-pooed his position on apartheid. You know, we all have to be realistic, whatever. And he said, no, we don't. Uh, to be really realistic is to stand up for the values that we think are important. And apartheid ain't one of them. But it's so cute because you hear that story and it sounds like he's kind of making a joke and making a laugh, but it's deadly serious. Okay. And he uh, he was very good at doing that. Ms. Kemp, I know you could tell more stories and, and the legacy yeah. that we will see with the, the former prime minister. But thank you very much for sharing some of your thoughts today. Much Thank you. And thank you for giving me a chance to tell a few of them. Former All the best. Cheers. Former Prime Minister Right Honourable Kim Campbell.